If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. And if you're looking for code cards, make sure you check out Poton Store. They have automatic email delivery and all the latest Pokemon TCG codes and you can use Tablemon code for 5% off. If you're from Europe, MealyBotsGaming.com is a great option to get your cards from. They have all sorts of sealed products, merchandise, and all the sets available from Pokemon Sun and Moon upwards, including the latest Hidden Fate set. Don't forget to use Tailmon code when checking out to get a further 5% off from your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to Digital World 2020. Thanks so much for joining me and today we are going to be playing a no energy Alola Ninetales deck. Um, big credit to the Tricky Gym who uploaded this video and I had a really fun time watching it. I figured it would be cool to feature it on my channel but the original list is from there. I just made a couple of changes, literally only two. I took out two of the fan Rotoms, which are very nice to spin and reduce the amount of damage that you need for um, Rubbish Blizzard to 1KO basically anything. You deal 10, 10 times the damage um, for each Pokemon tool card in your discard pile. <clears throat> but I did want a slightly stronger attacker in Frost Rotom dealing 10 damage plus 20 more damage times the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Especially nice to hit fire decks for weakness and also the psychic type Rotom with the plasma slice attack where hopefully we can target down um, something useful or at least like if we leap with this we can actually put a lot of pressure to Mew Mew. And I just wanted like six overall hard hitting Pokemon other than the fan Rotom since we have no recovery here. All we have are Hapus and Inguanemets which definitely kind of destroyed the deck in a way um, if you have nine tails in your hand and then you have to go on Emmet, then you're in trouble a little bit. Um, and then if you have had one, you find like a lot of the nine tails pieces, you are also in trouble. Of course, you're hoping to find any and all of the fairy charms and the giant bombs. Um, but the idea behind this deck is to be very destructive, very quick, and um, to toss every resource away. And it's gonna be hard to set up for Alola Nine Tails every single time. Now the deck does have essentially an infinite damage output. You have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 tool cards, of which you need 27 to one hit KO attack teams. You should be okay just two hit KOing them, but you do need 27, unless they end up hitting into a giant bomb that you attach. You do need 27. Um, of these tools in your discard pile to be able to one heal attack team. So this helps with the fire types and then we have the fairy charms to potentially help against psychic types, dragon types and even lightning types. So I figured might as well try and um, try and give this deck a fair chance. I'll play it for like two or three games. We'll see where it gets us. Probably not the most competitive deck, but why not give it a try? And we do hit for weakness on the dragon types. So this might have a really good ADP matchup now that I think about it. This might actually have a very, very good ADP matchup. We'll see. All right, so we start with Vulpix. We do start with double Vulpix and a half in hand. Not bad at all, right? Not bad at all. We have a couple. Well, a few rather um, charms in our in our hand. The dragon one being the most impactful one, and I would expect my opponent to lead with the GX attack to make it so that he only needs to knock out three Pokemon. That should allow my Volpix to kind of kind of survive. Um, if the Volpix gets attacked, then so be it. I can follow that up with a Dragon Fairy Charm on the Alola Ninetales. Uh, the Fairy Charm ability will not help protect us against Keldil, that's not very nice. Not much we can do about that though. Not much we can do about that. Alright, so 
turn one, ends resolve, that's a dream. For only one energy, that's not the dream, that's for sure. But there we have the attachment for turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and Hapu. Definitely keeping the nine tails. And I'd say since I have another Hapu, I'm gonna keep the Acrobike. I would love to set up another Vulpix, but like I said, I definitely think my opponent will go ahead and um, take this KO, right? or I would expect him to. Uh, I can gnaw for 10, <laughs> which is not great. Um, so one, two, three. I only have three tool cards in the discard pile. I do need a bunch in order to knock this out. I do need 14 of them in the discard pile. So we need our next Hapu to be extremely perfect, being meaning we need a Detene in there and like five tool cards. And even then it might not be enough because that would be five plus the three plus the four, that would be 12. So not quite what we need. So hitting the numbers is not super easy for this deck. But as long as we get a consistent stream of um, nine tail senses, <laughs> we might be okay. And the energy attachment might indicate my opponent is going to uh, go ahead and pressure. No, he goes for the alter creation. Okay, so I definitely don't mind that. Definitely don't mind that. That's actually pretty good because of the dragon fairy charm. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna poke it here first in order to get the Ingo and Emmet. That actually seems very useful. <clears throat> then I'll go ahead and have So now I don't need to, to get KO this guy. Uh, giant Bomb. My opponent will actually be doing a lot of damage to me. There's only one tool card in the top cards. So that sucks. One, two, three. So four, five, six, seven. That's 140 plus the 100 damage. It still wouldn't be enough. Ah, this is so sad though. Okay, I'm gonna grab these two. I'm hoping, right, that the Dragon Fairy Charm carries us here a little bit. So one, two, three, four, that's only 80 damage, but we are not getting damaged in return, which could be really impactful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rubbish Blizzard for now. We only hit for 80 damage, not a lot, but in theory, right? In theory, my opponent cannot damage me, at least not this turn. Alright, so if we took a KO this person, then that's okay. We need... We need a lot. We, need, we do need a lot in the discard pile. We need 10 tool cards now in the discard pile. Three of which we can immediately discard from our hand. The issue is getting the other three in there. for zero damage thanks to the beautiful dragon fairy charm and the uh, Kaleo does get powered up. Kaleo much easier to knock out, right? much much easier to knock out. Um, I do get a giant bomb which I feel like I just go ahead and dead change here. I will need my last Alola Nine Tail though that's for sure. So let's just go ahead and better change. This gives me the opportunity to potentially play a supporter afterwards, which is pretty impactful. Um, especially with that half pool. I'll I only have a dragon fairy charm, so sure, I'll keep the escape board just in case I need for the Dene for whatever reason. Now acrobike again. I'll keep this to discard that skateboard. So that's how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. So we have enough now. We have enough to one kill this person. Ooh, that's a huge find. That is actually a huge find. And I definitely think I keep the Denny because I have the, well, yeah, so I have the Ingo and Emmet. I actually think I keep the Acrobike. Mm, no, you know what? I'll keep the Denny. If I kill this guy back to back, then I should be in a great spot, in fact. So let's go ahead and rubbish Blizzard. 11 tool cards, we hit for weakness, perfect numbers. Well, more than perfect, actually. We get three prize cards, one of which is the fourth Alola Nine Tails, that is huge. 
but it's absolutely huge. I don't think my opponent can bypass three yellow when I kill, right? He shouldn't be able to. So we're in a really good spot, actually. I feel like Shrine of Punishment might be very good because it's an extra way to get damage onto the board for this deck. Pretty interesting though, pretty interesting. Like this has some very hard losses in um, Lysander Lab, right? Lysander Lab, Speaker on Malamar runs over you. Almost a dead draw, they always do. Um... Mew Mew also seems like a terrible matchup because the Fairy Charm stops damage, but it does not, in fact, stop um, effects of attack. So, an Espion Deoxys just runs you over. And then they should be playing the Greninja GX now, so that is also another problem. We do see the Drampa. That Drampa is going to get blown to little bits from a Lowland Nine Tails. So currently we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We need 6 more, 4 of which we already have. Right? 4 of which we already have. Now the issue is I could potentially deck myself out. Right? Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we need one more. We only need one more tool card as a top deck, not quite. So... How am I going to get one more tool card into this card pile? That's an issue right here. I do this. That's 16. And I'm one short. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. My opponent says, "Well played," meaning he knows he has one, right? One short. One two card short. I. I yeah. One tool card short. 10 damage off the KO. If I knock that guy out, then I win because nothing stands another hit. But now he knocks me out, he attaches to the Drumpa, and then the turn afterwards, he knocks me out with Drumpa. He can knock out anything, and thanks to a GX attack, he'll end up winning. So, that's the game. One energy away. My only hope would be to reset stamp, of course this deck does not play reset stamps. So let's just go for maximum damage. I generally thought we were close to winning this one. But unfortunately we ended up not doing so. One turn too late. One turn too late. Because the damage modifier is only 10, that's the biggest issue. My Hapus though were very sad because of the Hapus, the two Hapus, I got like one energy, I mean one tool card and then two tool cards or something like that. So that was the biggest problem, right? That was one of the biggest problems that we had just now. How much we can actually do about it. So let's give it another try. Yeah, let's give it another try. But you can see how this deck um, is nothing but a fun deck. Right, definitely not something you bring to a regional, not something you bring to an international. Um, obviously the build is not completely optimized, right? I don't know what else you would do because you really need um, you really need those tools in the discard pile right away. Um, and then the, like the Dialga Pulka deck applies so much pressure that you won't have time to actually attack with the uh, frost rotom at any point pretty much and we're going second again so that's that makes this even worse if you will and my opponent starts jirachi you always start jirachi against me Oh, 
All right. That is an Ori Corio. Captivating Salsa. Switch one of your opponent's attack bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon, the new active Pokemon is now burned and confused. I have no idea why you would play that card. Okay, let's play this. Nope. So we do not hit. Let's go Hapul. Okay, so let's grab these two people. This sucks though. Yeah, so we're down to three nine tails basically. Um, I will, however, have to utilize this to retreat because I am threatened <laughs> by the salsa Pokemon. I have no idea what we're up against. Seems like a meme deck. Yep. I guess maybe this is baby plants. Oh gosh, are we about to get knocked out? <laughs> are we about to get energy a skateboard double custom KO'd? Please no. There's one, there's two. <laughs> All right, only two tool cards, however. Only two tool cards means we are in trouble. We need Ingo and Emmet. This is the top card of my deck. I feel like I'll just draw the top five. Acrobike is a good card. And we are hoping to find a Dedene over the next four cards. There we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. So I'll just grab whatever. So do we have seven now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Eight, nine. And we even got another Volt Bait. So goodbye captivating salsa you were not captivating enough very clearly rubbish blizzard we get the ko to respond to the threat thankfully no double custom nature last turn or we would have been in trouble There's another welder. baby blown. Why would you ever play this card? I have no clue. I have absolutely no clue. But <clears throat> losing that nine tails really sucks. Okay, so we get a prize here on the Pichoro. That's very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and Ingo and Emmet. I am pretty sure. Ooh, I definitely want the Vulpix. I definitely want the Vulpix, because now I have enough tool cards. 
to a point where I don't have to worry too much about this. So let's go Volpix, let's go Acro into the Ingo and Emmet. So how many Nine Tails do I actually have? There's two left. So I have three Nine Tails for his four plus Cephalons, and I guess the Frost Rotom also helps. The Frost Rotom also gets a knockout. Um, therefore, I should have benched it. Because now I'm getting knocked out, so I should have benched that Frost Rotom. That was a small misstep on my part. Um, I do have one escape board left. <clears throat> I just I wasn't super eager to bench another Tetene, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Heat Factory, yeah, my, there's nothing we can do to stop my opponent from really drawing everything. We just have to hope. We literally just have to hope. Double Blacephalon, he must go for a knockup here, right? He has to. He absolutely has to. Wait, what? Chooses not to? Why? What? Why would you do that? Why would you? Do that. I do not understand that, but I'm happy, right? I am happy to take that extra KO because now, even if my opponent knocks out the, the Dene, I think we're gonna be able to win. <laughs> I actually think we are going to be able to win this match out. Yes, let's think about it, right? I am two prizes ahead. Even if my opponent goes double custom catcher to Dene, whenever he does that, he's not targeting one of my attackers. So then they go, even if they do it right now, they go down to three, and then I go down to two, then they go down to two, then I go down to one, they go down to one, and then I win. So I have two attackers right now. They would, like, a better strategy for them would be to. Um, clear out my attackers at this point. Hope I don't find another nine tails. But I believe I will. I believe I will. All right. So there's a Firebolt Circus, I am very surprised my opponent went that route, that seems like a very suboptimal. <laughs> like, just by playing this card, my opponent's doing something wrong. And then Frost Crush, 10 damage, yeah. This Frost Crush is really going to crush <laughs> the, <laughs> the Blacephalon right here. So, the biggest issue right now is... that I don't have another nine tails, right? That is the, right now, my biggest problem. Getting reset stamped would be an issue. So maybe I should have attached all those tool cards actually. Yeah, I actually should have attached all those tool cards. That way I'm not putting them back. So a few suboptimal plays for me, definitely. Not gonna lie, right? Not gonna lie. So there's a Stellar Wish. Very Welder, not that that matters. And then, like, after my opponent knocks out something this turn, 
As long as it's not the like if it's the Dene then I have the Frost Rotom and I don't need to bench as Dene. But if it is the Dene, no if it is the Frost Rotom then I can play as the Dene because then even if he goes double custom, he goes down to one whilst I'm at one, and then I win. So it's a lose lose for him. His big deal would be to use Reese of Them this turn and only this turn pretty much. This turn and only this turn. <clears throat> That's the only thing that really helps him here. Um, the heat trend is just not quite useful. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Alright, so my point hoping he can tank a hit with the heat trend. Way too hopeful, I would say. Way too hopeful. So I guess attaching all of these was not great. Well, I guess if I attach one and then it goes to discard, that's 19 exactly. So we don't get reset stamped. Luckily for us, generally very luckily for us. So now what's better to use the Dene or to use Ingo and Emmet? Um, definitely the Dene, I would say. I just see more cards. And then I still have a choice of a supporter. And all I need is a Ninetales. I need one of my two Ninetales to not be bottom two cards. There we go. And Rubbish Blizzard gets us our win with a low one Ninetales. So we went up against two uh, meta decks, right? ADP and Baby Blonde with Pichotto. And um, we had a chance to beat ADP. Uh, we need one more tool card. A slightly better half pool where we played it twice would have given us a win. And we just demolished Pidgeotto, arguably with some not super optimal play for my opponent, so that is something I have to consider. But yeah, looking pretty good. Um, trying to make sure I have enough videos for the whole week for, um, for all the time that I'm traveling to Brazil. So that will be all for this video, but um, I invite you to try out the deck if you want to. Big props to Trigger Gym, as I mentioned, for the list. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.